<laughs> Children. Petri dishes of disease. I had my little uh, 10 month old niece here a little while ago and she was kind of boogery, but it worked out. It was all right. What does that mean? Kind of boogery. She was a little, you could tell she was Nasally. having one of her early, you know, let's build that immune system moments. And, uh, yeah, a little smeary, little boogery and we got her cleaned up. She was all right. Yeah. But Didn't I, thought, infect you? I thought, well, I hope this isn't one I don't know about, you know, I mean, like I may, hopefully I've run into this before, so I don't get some cold now. My goal is just not to be sick in Vegas next month. That's all I care about. I want to be well and not coughing on everybody. No, you don't want to be sick in Vegas. That's no fun. Yeah. You've done that before. That's I the have. first time I met you in person. That was the worst. But even, I mean, I'll take a minor cold, but this flu is so bad right now. I'm terrified of getting it. I don't want it. You mean black lung? Black lung. A like, minor cold? A bit well, of I think it's called a black plague. No, see, he's making a minor joke. So like, Get it? Mine. Oh, yeah. Right. But like, what does age have to do with disease? <laughs> 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 I'll be here all the week. Yep. All the week. Daily Tech News Show. Helping each other not understand. Yep. <laughs> Helping each other misunderstand. It's a minor sickness. <laughs> oh, you should go to a pediatrician instead. Why do they say? No, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Even I uh, thought that was too dumb. That's something. Well, you should write it down so you know this is the threshold, which I write. This is my line. I was going to go somewhere with Pedialyte. It just didn't. It didn't work. We bought a bunch of those. We ended up not really using any of it. Pedialyte. Oh my gosh. I haven't heard that in a while. It's a like Gatorade for kids. Mm-hmm. A friend of mine um drinks Insure. Like, <laughs> like, and like vitamins. They, and it was funny because the, the other day, the other, it's just, you know, 30 something. The other day he was like, I have to go to Walgreens and get and what I heard was insurance. I was like, <laughs> they sell what? Everything like now. for like like a healthcare thing? Like, and he was sort of like, What? What are you talking about? <laughs> so, what, what I love so is the clarification was that he was buying insure. And you're like, okay, insure. that does that's yeah, because I was like, weird. but like you have to buy insurance at Walgreens? That's so weird. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, in a way, yeah, and like he was like, he kind of popped up in the top, like, who doesn't drink Insure? It's like really, really <laughs> healthy. And I'm like, no, that's the attitude you take if you drink Insure. Is like, my only defense is to pretend that everyone does it. Right. Mm -mm. I mean, unless unless you are of an age that it is appropriate, but yeah. But it I is mean, like, for someone I, in their 30s to drink Insure. Yeah. Does he Without have, any kind of medical need, I guess. Does I guess that person have all their teeth? Does he have what? Their teeth. Like, sometimes people drink. You know, he has so, his teeth. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess I should say, like, if you drink insure in your thirties because of a medical necessity, that's not weird. But no, if you're just no. like, I just no. choose to drink insure, no reason. I think there are people in the world yeah. who are like full of vitamins, yeah. more fun than a vitamin. Insure it is. is it? <laughs> and I was like, insure because they have gummy vitamins now. And they're I don't delicious. like those. They pretty, pretty, less vitamins. Pretty oh, fun. they're so good. Gummy vitamins. I love gummy vitamins. I don't think they work, though. I, I don't know if they're really good. doing me much good. I hope they yeah, are. Man. I like them. All right. It's 1.30. Oh, All that's right. perfectly. It's 2.30 where you are, Scott. Yeah, this is good. I like it. Let's do it. Here we go. The Daily Tech News Show is brought to you by its global listener base, not outside organizations. To find out how you can contribute, go to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, March 14th, 2018 from DTNS headquarters in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. And from the sunny Salt Lake City, at least till Sunday, I'm Scott Johnson. Ah, it's good to be back in our appropriate places again. Happy to I, have you back, Tom. I, I've got so many thank yous. Thank you to Brian Brushwood for letting me use his studio. Uh, thank you to you guys for filling in on my travel days. Thanks to the audience uh, for being awesome and just always being there. And, of course, to my mother. Oh, I love that. Thank you, Mrs. Merritt. <laughs> I hope she's listening. She's not. Oh. Uh, my brother is, though. So, bro <laughs> so Tim, if you could text mom, tell her I thanked her. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, our producer, Roger Chang, held down the fort from here, 
one of the days that we were gone. How's it going, Roger? Uh, I'm a little under the weather, but otherwise it's good. All right. We need to get through this then. Roger, you can do it. Hang in there. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Broadcom has officially withdrawn its offer to acquire Qualcomm after U.S. President Trump issued an order to block the proposed merger. Broadcom has also, also withdrawn its proposed sale of directors for Qualcomm. Broadcom will continue its plans to move its official headquarters from Singapore to San Jose. Currently, it was, it was joint headquarters to just San Jose, making it a U.S. company. Hmm. Walmart announced it's expanding its grocery delivery service from six cities to more than 100 markets. Oh, my gosh. That's all by the end of the year. Walmart currently uses Uber and Deliv for deliveries, but says it will add more partners as it expands. Instacart has been adding more grocery partners in advance of losing its tie up with Amazon's Whole Foods because now Amazon owns them. And Target recently acquired Shipped. That's S-H-I-P-T. Yeah. That. If you order pants from Target... They will ship your pants to you. <laughs> Google said Wednesday it will no longer accept advertisements for unregulated or speculative financial products. Now, some of those are weird financial things like binary options and stuff. Uh, but cryptocurrency and ICOs count too. So no more ads for cryptocurrency on Google. In a separate announcement, Google said it has removed 3.2 billion ads that violated its policies in 2017. That's double the number it reported in 2016. They're pitching it as an improvement in enforcement. You could also look at it as like, wow, there's a lot of scams out there. Mm. No more uh, no more DTNS or dailytechnewsshow.com ads for pushing me toward Dogecoin. It's not no, gonna... never had it, never will. Uh, let's actually talk a little more about France. All right, I like France. France is cool. Patrick comes from France, another DTNS favorite. Finance Minister Bruno Le Maire said Wednesday... France will take legal action against Google and Apple for their treatment of developers. Lemaire said it is unacceptable that the companies, in this case, impose prices, take data, and can unilaterally, unilaterally rather, rewrite contracts. A similar investigation of Amazon is being reviewed by a tribunal, which always sounds scarier than it is. Anyway, the companies could face fines in the millions of euros. Yeah, so the, the upshot of this is they're trying to protect developers uh, you have a choice. You can develop for Android or you can develop for iOS. And uh, they're saying, look, both of them uh, say you have to give us certain data. Both of them set limits on what you can charge. And both of them have terms of service that they can change at any time uh, without getting your consent. So France is going to say that's not okay. Well, also, uh, I shouldn't say most apps. I don't know what the breakdown is, but it seems like these days, if you are really pushing to get your app out there, you're building it for both platforms. So in theory, you could burn that candle on both ends and that they, they see that as a bit of a bummer for the developers. Yeah. And Google and Apple, I mean, they could, they could tell you like, well, if you don't like it, develop for somebody else. But I mean, effectively Google and Apple, as far as the mobile market is, are all you have. Yep. Speaking of development, the new Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus comes with a 1.4 gigahertz quad core processor, Bluetooth 4.2, dual band Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi also has modular compliance certification, making it for products that uses a Pi to get certified for Wi-Fi. The Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus sells for 35 bones. That should be making it easier to get yeah, that certification. No, no uh, kidding. Because uh, right now, if you use a Raspberry Pi in another product, uh, then you have to go through the certification from scratch. But because it has the modular certification, you can put Raspberry Pi in and then submit it saying, I'm, I'm using the, the Pi 3 Model B Plus check mark, right? That just simplifies things. Well, uh, I don't know if anyone else has this problem, but I, I feel like I need to make a quick confession. I have lots of cool ideas for a Raspberry Pi integration into one thing or another. And I keep thinking I'm going to do a project and then I kind of wait and wait and wait. And one of these came about, I won't even describe what it is. It'll take too long, but I thought, all right, I'm going to get myself a Raspberry Pi. I finally did it. And then I sat on that thing, spent, I don't know, whatever they were, 65 bucks because I had a bunch of other stuff with it. And I sat on that thing and he had, here we are again, another revision, a revision I would probably want for the project I'm doing. I wonder how many other listeners are like me you want to get in on this dyi stuff but you just well wh what was the reason that you kind of abandoned the project i didn't really abandon it i just have too many and i realized uh, it, also the time passed in such a way that was almost imperceptible so now here i stand 
all broken hearted with a Raspberry Pi not B plus. Uh, and, and, and it bums me out a little bit to hear that this is out. But what do I expect? This is progress. Things get iterated on. I should have known this going in, but now I'm wondering if I should. I mean, the Model B is still certainly fine. Uh, you don't get that certification advantage. I don't think that was ever going to be a big concern for you anyway. I think the bigger concern is that you said DYI. Maybe that's why you're not doing it yourself. <laughs> Do yourself in is what I'm saying. Right? I mean, that was the problem the whole time. You don't want to do yourself in, Scott. It's not okay. Do it yourself. Uh, now, uh, you know, the motto here, I, I don't know if we ever even mentioned this on the show, but on the website, it says helping each other understand. So folks, two things I'd like to hear from. Uh, we're, we're the clearinghouse. We're leading the conversation, but let us know if you've got a cool Raspberry Pi project, uh, send it in to us. And if you've got tips for Scott, that will be like, oh, the thing you need to do to get yourself going is this feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Nice. Help us got out. Uh, Microsoft has developed translation software. It says can translate Chinese news stories to English just as well as a human can. Uh, you can try it out at translate.ai. Microsoft used deep neural networks to train the software with a dual learning system that reversed the translation to see how well it did. Uh, it also did some reverse translations in another method to sort of check its results. Uh, it used something called deliberation networks, which kind of mimics the way we revise our writing, where you do like a first draft and then you read it over and you're like, oh, that's not right. That's not right. It's kind of a machine learning version of that. There were a couple other methods that Microsoft detailed in their blog post. The claim for quality is based on a test they did of a recently introduced standard called News Test 2017, which is focused on news stories. Uh, so Microsoft isn't trying to claim they've solved translation, but they're saying, hey, we did really well on this standard test that was released at a conference recently. Uh, and so we're excited about applying this method to other things to see how well we can do. You know, this whole thing got me thinking about the conversation we had last week about if you were to get rid of social networks and only get your news from print, right? Or, you know, the, whatever the print magazines were uh, and newspapers were offering. And I also sort of love the idea of saying like, okay, well, if um, the translation were to be pretty rock solid, what if I were to get all of my news from Chinese newspapers for the next mm. week? You know, what would it seem like? What would, you know, what would the spin be? All of that stuff. And up until now, I would say that the, you know, the, the I don't know, the big, um, the issue with me trying to do that is that it wouldn't translate appropriately. Yeah, you can get it's as good as a human. I'd be you could get the try. English language versions of some of these sites, right. but some but of them again, don't have it. Feel, like, especially if you go backwards with translation, like sometimes you're like, mm, that actually isn't quite right. But Microsoft's saying, no, it's as, it's as good as like a, a very skilled human as far as bilingual stuff goes. Yeah, on, um, on these common news story tests too. Uh, yeah. So again, they're not trying to claim too much here, but yeah, it could, it could open up a whole world of Korean. Well, uh, I'm, I'm assuming they could apply it to other languages. So let's stick with Chinese. Like there's all these Chinese sources, not just in China, but in Hong Kong, in Taiwan, uh, that maybe they have an English language publication, but maybe not all the most interesting stories are in that publication. So very cool. The world is mourning the death of physicist Stephen Hawking, who died early on March 14th at his home in Cambridge in the UK. Hawking survived with a motor neuron disease for 54 years, also discovered that black holes leak something now called Hawking radiation, and with Sir Roger Penrose developed the Penrose-Hawking theorems relating to relativity and gravity. He also appeared on The Simpsons, Futurama, and Star Trek The Next Generation. He was <laughs> beloved by all. Yeah, I, you know, when somebody of note dies and most of the time, I was saying this on my morning show, most of the time it's like, oh, they lived a great life or, oh, they were too young or, or, or oh, whatever. Right. what a shame. Oh, yeah, get before it. his time. One okay. others. If you're a big Star Trek fan, Leonard Nimoy's passing was a hard thing and all that. This one really, really got me. And I think it is because this is a man who for most of his life couldn't move, couldn't speak without assistance, yet did so much more than most of us can ever claim to do by the time we turn 90 and finally kick off this mortal coil. And that's incredible enough. But at the same time, he had a sense of humor. He would do, like he said, he'd show up on The Simpsons, he'd show up on Star Trek. It was a great episode of Star Trek where he played himself once in The Next Generation. And uh, Futurama and others, like he's 
he wasn't afraid to sort of put himself out there in that way. And it's just unlike anyone I've ever known. So it really, really knocked me over last night when I got the news. It was a serious bummer. Yeah. Uh, we got more than 50 years of Stephen Hawking that doctors didn't expect. Uh, so I, 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 that's what I keep trying to tell myself is like, how lucky are we that he made it? Yep. That he survived, that we got the advantage of his brain working on these problems. Um, he will certainly be missed, but uh, well done. Good life, Stephen Hawking. Yep, I would agree. Uh, as Ars Technica tells us, Samuel Axon, he's from Ars Technica, I should say, put together a story covering Apple SVP Eddie Q's interview at South by Southwest. That's where Tom was, sort of. Uh, Axiom points or Axon rather points out that in the most recent earnings report, CEO Tim Cook, that is Apple's uh, Tim Cook, identified services as a division ripe for doubling that uh, being revenue in 2020. That's just a couple of years, folks. They want to double their services revenue. And Q discussed the importance uh, to Apple of curation, both regarding stories that appear in Apple News, as well as in its video strategy, uh, focusing on acquiring quality programming heard so much about lately apple used to be uh fine losing money on software and services just as long as it moved hardware units you guys think that's changing yeah um <clears throat> it still is a hardware company certainly but um and we talked about the acquisition of texture um the the online magazine that Apple's using to sort of beef up. It's like the idea, like if you're at Apple, you know, you're not going to see pornography. We have a certain amount of free speech is great and everything, but this is um, a certain standard that we've decided as an entity we represent. Um, and that's what you're going to get with us. That's not hardware. I, you know, look at Apple music and how much it's grown over the last year. I mean, Spotify is still the, bigger um competitor but like apple really cares about original content you know it's a little hit and miss right now how much of it is going to be successful but the company is clearly going into the services uh arena harder than ever before yeah i mean we are certainly seeing the change happen it's i don't think the change is there i wouldn't look at the next apple earnings report and just discount all the hardware sales right uh but the conventional wisdom used to be it doesn't matter what iTunes does. It doesn't matter what iCloud does in the bottom line. What matters is, did they sell the iPhones? Did they sell the Macs? Uh, and that is changing. Uh, and I think it'll be interesting to see how Apple deals with that change because in the past, they could do things that were costly, uh, that were not in their best interest in the bottom line of the content for the sake of selling the devices. And I, I've been looking at their TV efforts that where they've been signing these big names and writing these big checks for high level, high quality programming and thinking, well, are they going to be able to sell enough Apple TVs to justify that? It sounds to me like that is no longer the only calculation they're making, uh, which changes what I expect them to do with this content. I was half expecting to have them say, it'll all be available for free if you have an Apple TV, an iPhone or a Mac. I doubt that's the case if they're shifting into services. I think they're also, I mean, this is just my own little pet theory, but I think that their chief competition in mobile, uh, that being Google, uh, you could argue that services uh, sell the devices. Like Google services are why people get a Google phone or a Google-based phone. And in some cases, the reason people get an iPhone is because they like Apple hardware, but they really like Google services. And thankfully, Google's putting most of those services in nicely made apps on that platform as well. At some point, they have to think about the kind of services they want to create to drive people to their hardware. So I don't see this as a moving away from hardware focus. I just see this as a reciprocal loop they would like to create where the weakness currently is in services and software. I agree. Yeah. Sarah Lane? Yes, I agree as well. <laughs> to get more of the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, subscribe to dailytechheadlines.com. All right, I'm still getting used to that. Okay, so let's talk about the idea that workers, um, not just at YouTube, although this is going to be the focus of our story, but workers in general have to deal with the limitations of AI by employing companies employing actual people to look at objectionable slash traumatic slash very disturbing content as a job. They get paid for it, but 
you know, with, with, with some repercussions. Workers employed to sift through and remove disturbing content on YouTube specifically now will be limited to doing that for four hours per day and no more. Obviously not a full-time job. We've talked about the idea of this happening at various companies. Facebook is another one where the AI, the algorithm is not good enough to completely get it away from the rest of us. So there are human people employed, at least on a temporary measure, to, 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 to keep it away from the rest of us. And, you know, the more that I thought about this, and this is sort of like a very dramatic way to look at it, but I think about the idea of like, okay, if robots are, um, you know, we create them to keep stuff away from the rest of us that are so detrimental that they will hurt the human, you know, existence, but they don't work. And humans are the only ones who can actually step in and like fix it for the rest of us. Why are some people sacrificed as the humans that, you know, are deserve to have all of that on their, you know, on their shoulders to keep it away from the rest of us? And it kind of like reminds me of some dystopian uh, ideas. And I just wanted to get uh, a sense from you guys before I get too deep into this on how, you know, far off base I might be. Mm, I mean, <laughs> this is fascinating to me because what this shows uh, a well, a and, and simply machines can't tell. They don't know. I mean, we can, we can kind of tell. Their pattern, just pattern recognition. We go, okay, well, that's a body part and that shouldn't be here, and we're pretty good at doing that. Uh, but also, standards change, and some find it incredibly offensive that somebody would do a video of them spouting off certain ideals or religious things or something. Uh, but somebody sitting right next to them may have a completely different view on those things and not find that stuff offensive at all. And so I get that this is complicated and I also get why it requires people. Um, the, the part about this that I think people are missing and in, in just in conversations I've had is a lot of people think that, well, how is this really traumatic? It's the internet. People are used to it. And if all day you spend looking at stuff, you know, what's bad and what's good and what's according to the guidelines, you just delete it here and delete it there and accept what's good and what isn't. But having a sister who's a professional psychologist, she would tell me that, that has this long-term erosive, corrosive effect on those who have to sit through it. And I think, th and I think that's my point, Scott. Is like it's not like quantitative; it's qualitative. Right. You know, like you know, saying, "Hey, nobody should do this for you know eight to nine hours a day," which would be a full-time job. Four hours. You know, let's make sure that they aren't you know exposed to too many bad things. I think that's missing the point. I think the fact that anybody would be employed to take on trauma that the 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 you know, sort of general humanity you know uh, um, line cannot deal with is potentially very disturbing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there I are equivalent. Uh, uh, kinds of professions, right? Where we have people exposed to things that most of us couldn't handle and they're either trained for it or they build up their ability for it. I mean, just, just think of doctors uh, for the, for the, you know, the, the least controversial version, they have to see things happen and people have to go through things and agonize uh, constantly. So I, you know, I, I think, that part isn't unprecedented. What's unprecedented is the other two parts of this, which is for the purpose of YouTube selling ads, not saving lives, right? And part-time contractors who aren't Google employees. These aren't, these are not, these are part of, uh, Google is one of many big companies that hire large contractors who provide a large section of their workforce so that they don't have to pay benefits to them. Now, the yeah, contractor company without those health benefits, yeah. particularly well, mental health benefits yeah, might be really important for this sort of thing. But the contractors pay benefits. Let's say it's often said like Google doesn't pay them benefits, implying that they don't get any benefits at all. The contractor company pays them benefits. They just aren't as good. And the mental health point is very well taken. A lot of times cheaper health plans don't have as good a coverage on mental health benefits. So, I, I look at this and it, it makes me think at a higher level that what we're seeing in many of these situations, this fake news, et cetera, is the, the consequence of companies like Google and Facebook pretending to be part of the open web, taking advantage of the open web 
as an example, YouTube adding Wikipedia links as, as a fact checking item without talking to Wikipedia, taking advantage of that open web, uh, but without engaging in the open web. So they 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 wall off part of it and say, well, we'll take advantage of the open web where it benefits. We'll close things off where it doesn't, and then you end up with them trying to come up with a paste over solution, because if if you have a truly open system, it doesn't concentrate things as much as what happens with YouTube. YouTube grows as big as it does. Facebook grows as big as it does because it takes advantage of the benefits of a closed system, not just an open system. And then the open system self-correction mechanisms don't work anymore, and they're trying to fake it up now. Mm -hmm. I think that um, the comparison to what a doctor might see, you know, is it kind of works and it kind of doesn't. You know, as a doctor, it's like if I get, you know, terminally ill and you have to deal with, you know, the repercussions of that and, you know, that's a lot of, <clears throat> that's very heavy stuff what people have to deal with for four hours a day maximum looking at youtube videos and again lo lots of other platforms have similar issues um which is uh content that is specifically made to cause trauma to humans that's different to me yeah that's weaponized right yeah yeah uh, well, thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com, facebook.com slash group slash dailytechnewsshow. These are just a couple of the ways uh, that we try to carry on this conversation and help each other understand this. We're, we're not the experts in all of this stuff. We're just leading the conversation and we need you to join it as well. Have another of Chris Christensen's wonderful tech and travel minutes starting now. This is Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler with another tech in travel minute. You may have noticed recently that the airlines have been cracking down on batteries that are in checked bags. In fact, if you have one of those new fancy bags that has a battery built in, some airlines like Delta will not let you check that bag. You can only check a bag with a removable battery, and then you need to remove the battery. And we had a reminder again of why this happens this week because we had a picture or a video that came out of a China Southern flight leaving from San Francisco where one of the bags in an overhead bin caught fire. It had one of those external batteries for recharging a cell phone, and it got too hot, and the bag caught fire. It didn't cause all that much damage to the plane, but if it had been in the luggage compartment, that could have been a much, much bigger problem. Just be aware of those changing regulations. They're with us for a while, at least. I'm Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler. Yeah, my flight back from Austin, uh, the guy boarding in front of me uh, got pulled out of the line because she recognized his bag had a battery. And she's like, you got to remove that. He's like, well, I, I didn't have to remove it on the way in. She's like, well, somebody didn't notice. Uh, but that's the rules. And it was the kind of bag, it was the kind of bag that requires a screwdriver to take the battery out. <laughs> yeah. How much did you pay for that? <laughs> Extremely cool. Yeah. <laughs> battery powered. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Let's, I have some bags that I, some carry ons that have built in batteries. And, um, I had, they let me end up, they ended up letting me bring it through my last trip to Anaheim. No problem going out, but coming back, they're like, I don't think you're supposed to have this. I guess we'll let it go. And they had to talk to somebody and they let me go. But now I don't know if I can take that bag anymore. Not with the battery being without removing it. You just have to take it out. If you can't yeah. take it out, then yeah, that's, that's a problem. Yep. Well, one bag that doesn't have any batteries in it is the mail bag. That's right. Gautaman uh, wrote in and said, there's been some motion around the ad her enforcement in India lately. We've talked about this in the past is sort of a, you know, a, uh, one size fits all uh, um, ID for everybody in India. I figured I could provide you with an update on my previous email. The Indian Supreme Court has a indefinitely extended the deadline for linking Adhar to mobile phones, bank accounts, and expediting passport applications. The previous deadline was March 31st. Linking Adhar to these accounts is currently optional, except for those receiving benefits and subsidies from the government until the case is resolved. And then he mm -hmm. quotes the Hindu as a source. That is awesome. Thank you for that update. And, and the link, I love it. It's not just an update from someone who's familiar, but also providing the like legitimate link to the newspaper coverage of it. That's awesome. And thank you also to Scott Johnson with us every Wednesday. Scott, you're the best. Let everybody know where to find you until we see you next. No, you're the best. Um, <laughs> I'm, uh, I got all kinds of stuff going on. The best place to find me is frogpants.com. Uh, 
I do have a project going that you may, I don't know, people may want to keep their eye on. And ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to make my own deck of playing cards. And by that, I mean illustrate the queens, the jacks, the kings, the jokers, and all that. Finally doing it. I even illustrated every little symbol, every diamond, every club, uh, all of it, spades, and including the card back, which is something I also always wanted to do. So I'm finally doing it. So keep an eye on frogpants.com. There'll be a project up there soon describing it, showing some samples from it, likely going to do some sort of Kickstarter so people can order it. Uh, if that's a thing you're into and want to get some custom cards with some pretty rad uh, ideas behind them, then check that out. That's frogpants.com. And I'm on Twitter at Scott Johnson. Excellent. Yeah, that's cool. I want to play some cards yeah. with a Scott yeah. Johnson illustrated deck. Uh, and folks, you can get all kinds of cool stuff to wear while you're playing those cards. DTNS hoodies, DTNS shirts. They cover your body which is an important thing when you're engaging in polite society outside of your own home. Or, you know, based on your location, you might be cold. Yeah. It's also a conversation starter. You got that Len Peralta shirt that says Tiny Mantis. Somebody's going to be like, mm, what's Tiny Mantis? And you say, no, it's not a band. It's a piece of Len Peralta original art. And then the conversation just soars from there. All of this can be yours if you buy it in the Daily Tech Show store. <laughs> it's clothing covering it's conversation starters it's everything you need uh dailytechnewsshow.com slash store dailytechnewsshow.com slash store is the url it's easy to remember and of course uh every month we're trying to get more patrons at least one more patron uh than last month so if you're already a patron thank you keep it keep around uh and try to convince somebody else go out there and, and get somebody maybe somebody you know is interested in technology or already listening to the show tell them look it's only a buck come on you can do it patreon.com slash dtnx if you have ideas for what we should put in our store in the future or any any feedback on what we've talked about on the show our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com we're live monday through friday at 4 30 p.m eastern 2030 utc you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live we'll be back tomorrow talk to you then This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> nice. Boom. Bam. Nice. That show rocked. Josh Elman going to Robin Hood as VP of product. Interessante. That wasn't really quite right for the show, but... Still interesting. You don't get a lot of VCs going back to like VPs of product. It's usually the other way around. Mm -hmm. Usually. Usually. Not always. Uh, uh, tomorrow is Justin Robert Young. Is that right? Should that be. Right? Isn't it Thursday? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? I think it is. Roger, if you're trying to talk, we can't hear you. <laughs> hello, yes. Oh, there yes, you are. Yes. Ah, yes. uh, hello. <laughs> Excellent. W. Scott oh, was asking in the chat. He was hawking steady the stars. Now he is one. Um, Wait, you said that as if you were just trying to like tell me my my bank balance. I didn't quite hear it. Uh, Stephen Hawking studied the stars. Now he is one. Oh, no, I don't know. I get, uh, I get the sentiment, but it sounds weird for some reason. Uh, France pulls tech giants' pants. Uh, robot monitors. Hmm. Well, we didn't have time to get into the movie whole thing. I was about oh, to. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. But we didn't... you know, I I saw the red, and I was like, eh, we're going over a little bit, so I just sort of kept it moving. I need to see it. I don't think I've seen it. Well, you can that explain it now. Movie. I can explain it now. Okay. So, well, okay. Without any spoilers, the premise of the movie, and this was based on a book from many years ago, so I'm not, I don't feel like I'm spoiling anything. Is like, so the idea is in the future, um, and this particular movie takes place in the UK, but in the future, um, certain uh, humans are harvested for their organs so that the rest of us, when our organs fail, 
you know, I need a new heart or I need a new kidney, I need a new lung, whatever. Right. There's a certain, you know, subset of humanity that um, that's what they have to do. That was why they were born. But those humans have feelings and emotions and, you know, they're not just organ harvesters. So it's a um, very sort of heavy. Uh, do we follow them around and then to learn that that's happening to them? Because this is sounding familiar. You know that it's happening to them. Uh -huh. But as the movie goes on, you realize that like there are like love triangles uh, between, okay. you know, these these humans that are like, I mean, I'm like, maybe I'm going to be alive for 20 years. Like, you know, you take enough of my organs and then I die. And then, you know, I, think, I'm I guess I'm thinking, of, I'm thinking of a different movie you think of the one with ian mcgregor is like that the, the island, island or something? Yeah, yeah the island oh yeah oh yeah i didn't see yeah. that one the island's basically was, run but i like it so right. that's a remake of a movie that came out in the late 70s early 80s had the logan press no <laughs> <laughs> logan's run uh made it into a tv series and then a movie i used to love oh my gosh i used to love run it. runner oh yeah logan's run was my favorite tv show yeah at the, um, at the time that it was on it's Raspberry, uh, I'm trying to Runner. I like um, Raspberry Pi Day. We could go with that. Okay. Raspberry uh, Pi here Day. in the uh, the the part of the world that uses the weird month first convention, it's Pi Day. Do you Pi do Day? Do you do? Uh, yeah, we do it. How do we do it? We do it month first. Oh uh, yeah. We why do we a, do that? Like, a, a large part of the world does it uh, day first, and then some parts of the world even do year first. Because fi filing or um, uh, filing things is easier if you go year, year, month, month day, day, right? Yeah, yeah. Why year, month, day is the right way to do it. I don't know so I, I, this is not like the metric system where I think our way is dumb. <laughs> I think our way makes kind of sense. It certainly makes more sense than day first to me, but it doesn't make as much sense as year first. It should be year, right. month, day. Yeah, I'm with you on that. But Tom. if you're just doing the day and not the year, then I think it should yeah. be month day. I think we do it. I think our way of doing it makes more sense. And I'm not just being an American date exceptionalist when I say that. No. You're Tom. American though or something. Yeah. I, some people are saying the Euro way makes more sense to them. Okay. Because they were raised with it, so maybe, yeah. Because I definitely think the metric system makes way more sense. That's like, but that's like fair. It's like me saying Fahrenheit makes more sense to me, but that's just because I don't think that's how you were raised with it. Yeah, that's how I was raised. Okay. Our way may, is is size order if you don't include the year, but then putting the year at the end is dumb. We should put the year first. I'm happy with partial. Well, it's already this way, so I don't know why I'm even talking about it. But I do everything I do: <laughs> Photoshop, Illustrator. Like any kind of production stuff, it's all millimeter, centimeters. It's all metric for me. Yeah. It's just centigrade the Fahrenheit that I get screwed up on. That's it. Well, and that one's hard because if you're not exposing, if you're not exposed to it regularly, then it just, it's impossible to know what it means. Right. Right, right, right. It means it's hot, cold, or balmy. Actually, it's not. A zero is freezing and a hundred is boiling. So those two are easy. That kind of gives you a, a, a way to, calibrate the rest but and to you guys we're right here sarah move toward the light come toward the light sarah and this is carol oh. there you are oh hi hi sorry hi. you guys went silent for a minute i was like what happened <laughs> oh we're here we're here we're talking about metrics the matrix. I like the metric calendar system where there's a hundred months. I don't like anything about the metric system. Each there's ten months. Each month has ten days. Feet, inches, yards. Keep oh, it that's I, just I prefer. Dumb. It's weird there's because I do no fractions difference. better with um, imperial or what do we that. call them? customary units. Is that what we call them? Customary that's imperial, units. isn't it? Huh? Mm -hmm. it's, well, it's originally imperial, but. Uh, an imperial gallon is slightly more than a customary, like an American gallon. Hmm. Yeah, we can't even do imperial. We have to come up with our own version of that, too. We came up with our own dictionary. We locked off all the vowels that were added in by the uh, the English as an affectation. E's not A's. E's not A's. <laughs> uh. Anyway, this was all started by us saying raspberry pi day yay speaking of pi 
Has anyone seen the movie Ghost Story? Um, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I like you, Scott. Like, I don't remember that. Wait. No, I need you. You would know. <laughs> Starring Rooney Mara. Oh, oh no. I seen it. I'm a big Mara Sisters fan, so I should have seen it. But. All right. Well, you know what? Let's talk about this next week when everybody's gotten caught up because pie is involved. Mm. So is weirdness. Hmm. Tell me more. Mm. I can't. can't. It would be I a spoiler. Literally can't. You wait, wait. So this. is this a new movie? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I think I was thinking of a Kevin Bacon thing or something. No. Oh, you're thinking of Hollow Man? No, it was Ghost. <laughs> Stop something. thinking of Hollow Man. <laughs> no, Ghost Story, 1981. <laughs> Not about Rooney Mara eating pie. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, Ghost Story starred Fred Astaire. No. Melvin Douglas, Douglas Fairbanks Jr., 1981. Uh, wow. Uh, that is not the one I was getting it confused with. What is is it just Ghost? Is that the one with Kevin Bacon? No, that's that's the that's, one. That's, uh, Patrick, that's Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze. That's so you nice. know, the rich man's that. Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Kevin Bacon's still around. Yeah, he's still he's still kicking it. But he goes by Kevin Mellencamp now. No, I feel like the whole <laughs> Kevin Bacon's and everything thing is going away though. Yeah, yeah. well, it's a it's I'm a gonna, generation. I'm going to share people. this with you guys in our Slack, just so you like. I'm sure it'll be like some uh, idea Jonah of what we're Hill. talking about. So it's many people good. are in everything now. Like it's not specific to Kevin Bacon. Everybody. The, re everything. the reason that I brought it up was because there's a whole pie thing, and I know that many of us feel very strongly about pie, mm -hmm. love for pie. Um, uh, and, and you know, sort of intense dislike for people who don't like pie. So, Wait, read the article like and then pie? watch the movie and then have your mind blown. Is there something about pie that's totally mind bending? You should just watch the movie. Really try funny. eating pie. Mm -hmm. Pie is great. Yeah. Oh, I pie is great. A raspberry or blackberry pie. Mm. <laughs> mm. Pie is great. No, you know what you don't want though. Rhubarb. rhubarb is a devil's weed. <gasps> no, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Scott it. Johnson. Hate it. Walk that back. Why do you hate my grandmother? I Why do you hate my mother? <laughs> I've seen your mom. I've seen her on a show before back in the Twit days, and I thought she was just awesome. Well, that's nice to hear, but she makes a rhubarb strawberry tart. That is to die for. So I don't know in what kind of rhubarb you're eating, but like it's really good. This, this is one of the many reasons that oh. I wish I was Linnell Lane's son. <laughs> she this probably one does too. Who are the other ones? <laughs> well, you guys could be brother sister because <laughs> she's awesome. She just makes a lot of pie, <laughs> and she makes pie. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, you yell at each other on road trips, <laughs> brother sister. There I mean, you we're, go. We're not far off now. Yeah, exactly. We just <laughs> form, formalize that. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. Um, but no rhubarb, yum. Come yeah, on, Scott. You no, know, my grandma Dell would always make uh, rhubarb pie out of our rhubarb from our backyard. I Tom would always say to his parents, "Dude, just, we're getting a Dell pie. It's a poisonous <laughs> weed." <laughs> Actually, my <laughs> sister and I used to make. Adele jokes about my grandma when that commercial was out. And she was still alive then. I think um, I made the joke because my sister's middle name is Adele after our grandma. I would say, dude, you're Margaret Adele. I think one of my great aunts was named Adele. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, no, I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was an Adele in my family as well. It's an old fashioned name. A nice one, though. Yeah. Hey, I've, Ruth. My, my grandma was born in like 1912, I think. Yeah. I don't really see that many Gertrudes or. Um... No, or Esters. Esters. Yeah, it does make a comeback. Certain names where you're just like, it's in the past. Oh, my aunt. I come back. My aunt was named no, Esther. I, I know an Esther. She's younger than me. My grandma my, was the well, my, gra my two grandmothers were Vivian and Dorothy. Oh, both Mine very were, uh, old fashioned names. Although Vivian seems to be coming back a bit, Dorothy, not so much. Do you know any Roxies? No. No, but I know your no. grandma was Roxy, which is I a know a Roxana. 
Like yeah, Roxanne? and Roxy, What's her name, my Roxy? grandma was not Roxanne. It was just Roxy. Huh. Rock, yeah, Roxanne is, you don't unusual. need to on the red light when you're hanging out with her. Yeah, my, my grandma never messed with the red lights. <laughs> or the police. <laughs> or Sting. Like, so, my like, Roxy. When, when did all our references go back to the 80s and no one was protesting? No, with the, our references are in the early 20th century right now, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> Entirely different. <laughs> Yeah, we're not. Yeah, going to Berlin. Totally right different now. thing. 1912, 1915. <laughs> you flappers. <laughs> but no, it's funny um, how some of the old fashioned names, they have nicknames. For example, one of my grandma's is Dorothy, but people called her Dot or yeah. Dotty. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we're, what? what? Like, look at how Dorothy is spelled. I, I don't know where this comes from, but it's a known thing. Like, if your name is Dorothy, people well, call you Dot. Dick for Richard. That too. Yeah. Where does that come from? No one knows. Well, it Jack turns out. John. Yeah, John and Jack is one I never understood. I right. Know. Yeah. Never understood that. Well, we will leave this mystery for the post show when I will give many right. other examples. Everyone wave to the camera. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye, bye. Liz. Get in the shot. Okay, bye. Bye, Jack. Bye, Dick.